Hello everyone, my name is Megan Quintana and I am a flower and vegetable farmer here in Bloomfield, New Mexico. I'm a zone six and today I'm getting started <laughs> on a flower. I'm actually going to be planting sea holly, which is Euryngium today so that I can sow it out in March, in the middle of March. Now, I'm gonna try and treat these as a cool flower. If many of you know, Lisa Mason Ziegler has this wonderful book out called Cool Flowers. And they are flowers that can be planted out six to eight weeks before my last frost date, or your last frost date. And my last frost date is May 8th, so I'm hoping to plant these out in March 8th. So I'm gonna do two successions. So my first one is right now. My second one is kind of be a little bit safe on the safe side. So for March, I'm gonna go and do one for May. So today is March and it is in the middle of November. We are November 16th, people. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that being said, middle of November, I want to plant this out and it says that I need to sow this 10 to 16 weeks before my last frost date. And so I'm going to sow this 10 to 16 weeks before my transplanting date, which is going to be March. And then I'm also going to do another succession of this, which will be for planting out after my last frost date, which is going to be Mother's Day. So we're going to see how this goes. How many ways can you kill a plant? mid-November to March. <laughs> a lot. I know it can be a lot. Now, see, Holly is a perennial from zones three through eight, and I'm in zone six, so I'm right, kind of snug right into the middle. So I'm thinking I can treat this as a cool flower and transplant it out before the last frost and see how it kind of works out. And I hope it works out well. Give it a little bit of a cold snap before the flowering season. And then hopefully as the years progress, They'll just be out there in my flower garden and I'll have them forever and always until something drastic happens like disease. <laughs> hopefully not. Really, hopefully not. Uh, or, you know, weather. But hopefully it works out fine. Now, I got my seeds from Johnny Seeds. And I am going to be planting the white sea holly, so the white eurangium, and hopefully it works out. So what I'm gonna do is I have my seed tray already. So I have 72 um, seed tray here, and I've already put my seed mixture in. Now I'm using something a little different. I'm using Happy Frog Medium. This worked for my seeds last year for my vegetable um, garden and it's done so well however there are really big like pieces of you know mulch basically some wood chips so what i do is i just get them off the top so that way i have good contact with the seed that i'm going to sprout so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and start planting them but before i do i'm going to put these guys in a nice ramekin so that way I can pick them up with my toothpick. Okay, seems good. I'm gonna get a toothpick like this. <laughs> it's not a wood one. I don't have any around my house, so I'm just gonna use a plastic toothpick. And it worked the other day, so hopefully it works today. But before I get started, I'm gonna give it a water. It's a little bit dry, and I don't want to water it when the seeds are on top. So it says Euryngium needs light to germinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that this mixture is nice and moist before I begin. And then I'm going to give it a good spritz on top with my mister to get some good water contact with the seed. So that's kind of what I want. And that's what I'm going for. And we're gonna see if that works. Hopefully it works. You never know. Sometimes with mother nature, you can never tell. So, dun dun dun. You can use any seed tray. You can use even the one silver that you have from previous year from planting out your plants from the nursery. Just save a couple and sometimes you can just get going. 
with any seed that you want to at any time that you want to. All right, this is looking pretty good. It is really dry. I live in a really dry climate, so I'm gonna be using a humidity dome on this as well to keep the moisture locked in during its germination days. So I believe it's about 10 days to germinate, seven to 10, so a week to 10 days is how um, long it's going to take for it to actually germinate. And it needs degrees from 72 degrees to 75 degrees, which is probably your home comfortably, what temperature you're keeping your home. I keep my home at 68 because I love, and I mean love, to wear myself some sweatpants and a sweatshirt in my house with big wool socks. <laughs> I don't think my husband likes that very much, but that's okay. I think when the husband's away, I shall go ahead and play. Oops, humidity to jump. Okay, so since I got some good moisture on here, yeah, and we have it dripping out the bottom, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and lightly give that a spit. I think I'm just gonna pour some water onto my surface. I don't think y'all wanna see me licking my toothpick. I don't know, I guess that's up to you. So I'm gonna grab it lightly with my toothpick. Actually, these are actually pretty big. Hmm. I think I can actually just plant them one at a time. I think I can actually. So they do need light to germinate, like I said earlier. So you're gonna just put them on top of the surface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press it down with my finger to make sure it has really good soil contact. And if you somehow got a seed packet that doesn't give you instructions on what it needs, sometimes you get that. Go ahead and look it up online and it'll tell you. There are so many good resources out there. And so I will sow the entire tree for you. So I'm gonna sow 72 today. I forgot where I left off. And as you go through, making sure that you have good contact with the soil, if you're using something like what I'm using, which is a potting soil mix, I'm using a potting soil mix. You can use a seed starting mix, which I think is probably what most of you guys are going to start with, like a pro mix of some sort. Um, they do sell seed starting mix on Joni Seeds, where I got my seeds in the first place. Or you can just go to your local nursery and they will have seed starting mix that you can start with. However, I've never had an issue starting with this. It is a little expensive. And since I'm starting these seeds out so far in advance, I kind of want them to have a really good start. Don't know if this is going to give them a good start. But that's what I think. And you want to know something? I'll give you updates on whether it was a good idea or if it was a total fail. But <clears throat> there are so many ways to garden. There are so many different ways to start seed. And there's so many different areas, geographical and otherwise, that are gardening and have their own, you know, resources and methods that really it's anybody's game. You can do whatever you want. I am going to put a, during the first couple of days um, for germination, I'm gonna keep that humidity dome on there. And then I'm also going to put a bottom watering feeder in there. So I can put a little bit of water in there to keep it nice and moist. Since light aids germination and it's not necessarily a dark, moist and a dark environment where it needs to be buried, the seeds I'm afraid in my area, because I'm in New Mexico, are gonna get so dry that it will 
not allow the seeds to germinate very well. You might get germination, but it'll be very spotty and it won't be consistent. And I want to get it as consistent as possible. I want the best germination rate as possible. So those are the two things that I'm going to do in order to make sure that I am doing the best that I can to start these seeds. And again, make sure you lift out all those wood chips and you get really good direct soil contact and not a seed on top of a wood chip. I've had that before and then I've had to go back and replant the seed. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it just died because well, it did not like being replanted. And that's okay. Now I believe I got, I got a hundred seeds and that is definitely way more than what I need. However, I'm hoping that maybe some of them I can sell in a small seedling cell this next year. If not, if I don't get the opportunity to do that, I will plant them all. <laughs> I will just see how much work I put myself into. But I'm starting a lot because there can be a lot of error between now and March. I mean, can you imagine? It's November 16th. We have four months, basically. December, January, February, March. Four months. How scary. But I mean, if I can keep a house plant alive, I think I might be able to keep a seedling alive. <laughs> Says me until the seed starting season really begins. These ones I'm starting early is because they have such a long germination rate and I will be transplanting these up <clears throat> if they get too big, which might happen and that's fine. I did put that into perspective. Now, I am taking you guys on a little bit of a journey with me. I'm not necessarily a professional at this. I've just used as many resources as I possibly could to learn about seeding and seed starting, germination, and using the um, using my resources that are available to me out there to the best of my knowledge. And, you know, also using some of my gardening expertise with what's worked for me in the past with my garden and applying that as well and seeing and hopefully, hopefully seeing some kind of, you know, success out of that. I don't know if the seed is in there. <laughs> We're gonna chance it. Good luck. May the odds be ever in your favor. That's what I think. There's lots of information out there on how to start your seedlings, on mixes that you can use, when you should start seeds. However, what I've recently learned is that not all seeds are treated the same, not all flowers and vegetables. A lot of vegetables can be grown and sown in a cool season and they love the cool season versus the, the heat of summer. So there's a lot to be learned, but I want to take you guys on this adventure with me and here in about seven to ten days I'm gonna give a little update on whether or not these guys have successfully sold themselves. Now I'm gonna put this over here on the refrigerator my little mouse trap so that I can put it where it belongs later. So all of it's ready to go. I gave it a good watering. Ooh, even the water got soaked up from the bottom of the table. And now I'm going to give it a light spritzing with my spritz. I'll be right back. I got, all right, I'm 
I'm back. I got this spritzer. It's an automatic spray pump. I got it at Harbor Freight. Very inexpensive. It's awesome. It has a couple of leaks, but I mean, it's better than going like this and getting arthritis in my index finger. It just doesn't sound very great. So I'm gonna give it a good spritz on top. I'm gonna clean this table later so I can be as messy as I wanna be. sure that everything has good contact get it going making sure I don't lift the seedlings up at the same time which I did and I think I knew exactly where it was supposed to go look at that once you do this for a long time you can see where your seeds are and where they're not and I like to make sure it's right in the middle it's very important because sometimes when they're on the edge of your cell tray, they can have an erratic growing um, tendency, it can be shorter, they're not getting enough water. And so right in the middle of the seed in the cell is where you want it to be because otherwise you get some weird stuff going on. Now I have a humidity dome. Ta -da! I only have a few of these because I don't need a humidity dome for everything. And I'm gonna put that right on top of this seed tray. I have a bottom watering system that I'm gonna put on here as well. And it has ventilation on the side, right here. Woo and then right on the top as well. Woo, there we go. So it comes with these vent latches as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and snap those in place because during the germination, I just want the top vent to be open and not the sides. Because again, I'm very, very dry here in this region. And so I wanna get these guys as much moisture as I can to give them a great germination rate. And once they germinate, and once I see growth, then I'm going to pop this off and I'm going to take them out of the bottom watering tray and I'm gonna start misting them again for watering. So that way they have good air circulation and they don't get algae forming or any type of fungus growing on them. So, alrighty, these guys are ready to go. So let me take you over to where my seed starting, my seed rack is. And I've started another set of seeds, my Lysianthus, because they're another cool flower that I want to start out and plant in March. And so that was going to be my first succession. And this, you run Jim, let me take you there. Welcome to my lair. <laughs> Actually, this is my den. So it's the workout room slash my seed starting room. Um, I chose it because it stays about 68 degrees in this room. Um, even when I turn up the heat over in my main living area. So that way I have really cool temperatures when I'm starting my cool flowers here soon. And then once we start getting into the summer, kicking it off for those really warm season seeds. I'm gonna move it out to my greenhouse probably. So I have my seed tray here of my seed holly, my uringium. <laughs> I just like that word so much more than sea holly. I just love uringium. Would you like some uringium? Like, <laughs> of course. I sound so fancy. So I have a seed heating mat here. I don't have very much on here. I have my Lysianthus that I started about three days ago. And now I'm gonna put my sea holly on. So here's that humidity dome. Now that has vents on the side right here. Whoa! That it can open and you can go inside and get some good air ventilation. And it has good air ventilation on top. I'm going to leave this one on top open so that it doesn't become overly saturated. I check on my seedlings very periodically make sure that everything is a-okay. So I'm gonna set that right on top of my seed cell tray and my bottom watering tray and set it right on top. And my heat mat is working really, really well. So we're living on a hope and a prayer here. Yeah. So hopefully all goes well. Thank you guys for following the journey. I am so excited 
to bring you guys along for the ride. If you want to come, that's great. If not, that's cool too. So, yay! All right, we'll see you guys later. Hasta la vista, mis calabacitas. <laughs>